are two things I'd like to take away from tonight's talk. One is that there is no biological, scientific basis for the idea of binding gender, if anything, especially. And the second one is, it's super important that we change our language to reflect that fact. Now, tonight is all about change, and it's gonna be a recurring theme that humans have a very complicated, <laughs> humans have a very complicated relationship with change. We like new stuff. We also like our old stuff. We like things to stay the way they are. And that's why most people who suggest change anything will be met with humanity's favorite question. Why? <laughs> why? Why do we have to change the way we talk? Can't we just talk the way we've always talked? And we can't. We know this because when we speak, we don't just convey information. We signal. We signal all sorts of things. We signal connectedness, and we signal culture, and we signal history, and <clears throat> you name it. And we all know this because all of us have changed the way we speak according to the people we're speaking to. When you're around your friends at university, you use different words, you use different references, you use different intonation to signal all of these things. And you use different words than when you were with your grandparents, right? The other reason we change our language is because language is a little bit magical. My favorite author is Terry Pratchett. Is there someone else here who likes Terry Pratchett? Yes, the Turtle Moons, yay. And he has a quote that goes, a person is not really dead as long as their name is still spoken. We feel that, right? We feel that even when someone's gone, and we know they're gone, and we have to move on, when we speak of them, when we speak their names, they're still here a little bit. That's beautiful, that's nice. But it also means that concept that's, that we've moved on from, we st still use the language that belongs to these concepts. If we still use language that refers to a time when people didn't believe in these concepts, we kind of keep those concepts alive. We keep them alive when we really should move on. We stand in the place of progress. So that is why we need to change our language about binary gender. Now the concept of binary gender is, well, firstly, is that the idea that gender is binary. Binary, there, uh, our next speaker will be talking about what binary is, and it basically means there are two of something, and it's either one or the other, and it can't be both. So that's, and that's what we think about gender. Now gender is an idea that we've come up with a long time ago, and it was super popular. Like we've started using it for everything, and we know that now because all of our stuff in society is so gendered. Haircuts, shoes, outfits, jobs, the way we relate to someone, it is all gendered. And the problem with that is that biologically speaking, dividing humans up into genders makes about as much sense as categorizing your books by color. And I hate I hate when people do that. I don't know about you, but I hate that. <laughs> Buy a painting! Just uh. What I'm not saying is that all bodies are the same. They're clearly not. What I'm saying is that this idea of there being all two types of bodies and that we have to fit them into these ideas that we've come up with about gender, that's wrong. Think about brains, for instance. There is no such thing as a male brain, as a masculine brain, as a female brain. There is no, no something like, <laughs> there's nothing like a sort of female brain or a slightly masculine brain. It's, it, the brain is not a gendered thing. Like so many things in society, the brain is not gendered. I'm a neurobiologist myself. Believe me, but there's also, because uh, if the brain was gendered, we'd be able to tell from brain scans whether someone, uh, whether the subject is male or female, right? And because we've always divided people up in those two groups, we've been finding all this 
gender is written. But if you just take the brain scan and you're sticking it to the computer and you let the computer guess just based on the functioning and connectivity uh, whether the subject that the brain belongs to is male or female, it can't do it. But if you correct for uh, body size, of course, a larger body will have a larger brain. Um, basically, it can't do it. It doesn't do better than change. And this has been done recently. We're, we're finding this out now. Like all of our neurobiology studies are doing this now, where we're just looking at the brains themselves and not really putting them into the different categories. And we're finding that there is nothing there. Like there was a talk of the corpus callosum being a thing, like the connection between the two brains have, but that was like larger in women, I believe. That's all debunked. Like none of that is true. So the brain is really like any other organ. Okay, we don't have a female liver, right? We don't have a male organ or something like that. So the brain is just an organ. Um, so when you think about this, and you start thinking about, okay, so maybe this whole gender thing is not super important. That's when people start yelling at you about genders. Now, I like yelling about genitals as much as anyone else. <laughs> right? Those are fun things to do. Um, but really, and I mean, that it's true. Like, there are kind of more or less two sets of genders. And there, there's a bit of a spectrum there. But yes, that, that is definitely the case. But the only thing that is important for is the whole procreation thing. Like, if you want to make a baby, you probably need both of them, and they probably need to be functioning. But that's about it. Like, that's the only thing genitals are important for. Stop talking about genitals so much. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, genitals are important for procreation, but only for procreation. So if you're not talking about procreation, leave the whole gender thing. So whenever someone yells at you about gender, sorry, whenever anyone starts yelling at you about gender, this is something you need to say. <laughs> now, of course, there's another thing that people like to yell about when talking about genders, and that's hormones. They like to say, oh, women are so hormonal. And that's, you know, I have a particular bee on my bonnet about that. You should check out my website when you're talking about that. The other hormone we like to think about is testosterone. That's a big hormone, isn't it? It's and you'd like to think that, oh, testosterone, oh, oh, it's so important, and it's a male hormone, it's not a male hormone. Everybody has testosterone. Everybody needs testosterone. We need testosterone for proper sexual functioning. Uh, we need it for, um, uh, we need it for ejaculation, but we also need it for, um, what's, what's the thing with the eggs that we do? Ovulation. Ovulation, that's the one, very good. You're all, you're all awake, this is good. We need it for ovulation, we need it for ejaculation, we need it for sexual function, and we need it, all of us, up to a certain point. And after that, more is not better. So yes, we need it for sexual function, but more testosterone doesn't mean you, se you function more sexually, or you sexually more function, or you know, you're not super good at sex all of a sudden. I know this, it's for to be true. <laughs> so yes, testosterone is important for sexual function, more is not better. And um, this quote this is for a lot of things. More testosterone is, is not necessarily better. Also, more testosterone doesn't make you stronger, faster, uh, more aggressive, more sexually active. None of that is true. They've done, excuse me, they've done a um, test not that long ago, this was 2015, I think, with athletes, where they measured testosterone in all of these athletes, and you see that the low testosterone athletes have outperformed the high testosterone athletes at running, at swimming, at weightlifting. Like a lot of the low testosterone just is better than the high testosterone. So this, this whole testosterone thing is not, it's not true. We've been told this, it's not true. Um, the other thing about testosterone people like to say is it makes you more aggressive. So if you have more testosterone in your body, you will be more aggressive and you cannot stand for it. Kind of be held responsible for your actions. You're like the Hulk. You just rip your pants and show up so <laughs> bad. You end up in five movies with Captain America. <laughs> um, 